Welcome back to SNS Grills, everybody. My name is Mike with the Everyday Barbecue YouTube channel, and today we're going to be doing a video on how to grill a perfect, delicious chicken breast without drying it out. And it's coming up right now. Welcome back to the channel, everybody. We really appreciate your support. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, consider doing so by hitting that button down there. And let's get right into today's video. Now this starts with prep for the chicken breast. So start by trimming your chicken breast by removing as much fat from the outside as possible and getting rid of any unwanted areas. Next is the dry salt brine. This is a very important step. By doing this dry salt brine, you're assuring a tender, juicy result and flavor through and through this entire chicken breast. I used coarse kosher salt for this, approximately one half teaspoon per pound. If you're gonna use table salt, keep in mind, the equation is only one quarter teaspoon per pound. Make sure to cover both sides of each chicken breast. Then simply place them on a rack, over a tray, then get them into the fridge overnight. The following day, this is what they will look like. Now you can see these chicken breasts have taken on more color by the salt drawing water out of the meat and then everything soaking back in. This is really gonna help with our end result. The next step is to get these seasoned up. Whenever I do a dry salt brine, I really like to use a combination of both of our rubs, the Not Just For Beef rub and the Rockies rub. Those rubs contain no salt, so you don't have to worry about oversalting the meat from the dry salt brine. Now we're just gonna hit each of these up with some olive oil. Once the chicken breasts are completely coated with olive oil, just go ahead and hit them up with that rub. And we want to be sure to get both sides. Okay, so now that these chicken breasts are fully prepped, it's time to set up the slow and sear kettle. Our target temperatures for today are 325 to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. To achieve that, I have the slow and sear set up with half a chimney of unlit coals. We'll be pouring the other half of pre-lit coals on top of that to achieve our temperatures today. I do have my water reservoir in place, although we're not gonna be cooking with water today. I also have my drip and griddle in place to catch any drippings and make cleanup after this cook. Very, very simple. I'll be monitoring temperatures today with the SNS 500 remote thermometer, which I did run through the pro port on the slow and sear kettle. Once you place your lit coals on top of the unlit coals, go ahead and place the lid on the cooker open up your bottom and top vents all the way to allow the cooker to start working its way up to our target temperature. Once you get to within about 75 or 100 degrees of our target temperature, go ahead and start choking back your vents until you get it dialed in perfectly. Here's what my final vent settings looked like, although keep in mind there are environmental variables, so yours may be just a little bit different. Now that we're all set to go, there's nothing left to do but to get these chicken breasts on the indirect side of the cooker. So our chicken breasts are on, and this is gonna be the easiest cook you've ever seen. We are just gonna let these cook indirect the whole time. We're gonna check on them about halfway through, and I'll see you then. Okay, it's been about 25 minutes, and our chicken just broke through 125 degrees Fahrenheit internal temperature. It's time to check in on it. So this is looking really good. We're getting a nice crust on the outside of this chicken. Let's go ahead and get this lid back on. Now our goal is to pull this chicken off the cooker today between 155 and 158 degrees Fahrenheit. Then simply rest it in foil just a few minutes before we slice into it. The cooker's running along right in our temperature range. This shouldn't take too much longer. I'll see you when it's time to remove these chicken breasts from the grill. So total cook time has been right around 40 minutes. We just broke through 155 degrees Fahrenheit on these chicken breasts, and they look absolutely gorgeous. I did double check those temperatures with an InstaRead thermometer. Keep in mind when you're cooking chicken breasts, some of them may be done before others. Just take those off the cooker, put them in foil, let those rest. They're better off in foil than they are sitting on the cooker and overcooking and drying out. Thankfully, these are all within two to three degrees of one another. So now we're gonna remove these from the cooker rest them in foil for just about five minutes and I'll see you inside at the cutting board to cut one of these bad boys open. So just check out how juicy that is inside. This is a perfect foolproof way to get chicken done right every single time. Now for my favorite part. 
nice, tender, juicy. Cheers, everyone. Mmm. So that is incredibly delicious and it is so easy to do. There's some beautiful clean smoke flavor there. Those rubs really stand out and the salt brine gives you a lot of flavor through and through these chicken breasts. You can taste that saltiness through the entire bite. So that's it for today. Thank you very much for hanging out with me. I always appreciate it. Remember till next time, two zones are better than one and I'll see you on the next video.